Well, hello, mighty companions. This is Earl Raj Purdy, and I'm here to do A Course in Miracles Lesson 273. And A Course in Miracles uh, Workbook Lesson 273 is The Stillness of the Peace of God is Mine. The Stillness of the Peace of God is Yours. The Stillness of the Peace of God is Yours. The Stillness of the Peace of God is Yours. The Stillness of the Peace of God is Yours. Perhaps we are now ready for a day of undisturbed tranquility. Are you ready for a day of undisturbed tranquility? Are you ready for a day of undisturbed tranquility? If this is not feasible that you could have a day that your peace is completely undisturbed, we are content and even more than satisfied to learn how such a day can be achieved. <clears throat> if I'm not at the point that I can give myself a completely peaceful day, at least I'm at the point where I can, you know, open myself up, up to being willing to learn how I could achieve a day of undisturbed tranquility. If we give way to disturbance, in other words, if you go off about something, if something is upsetting you, if you're mad about something, let us learn how to dismiss it. We've got to learn how to dismiss a disturbance and return to peace. We must learn how to dismiss the disturbance and return to peace. Now, in order to dismiss the disturbance and in, and in order to return to peace, we need but tell our minds, tell your mind with certainty. If you want to get rid of the disturbance, tell your mind with certainty. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The peace of the peace of God is mine. The peace of the peace of God is mine. The peace of the peace of God is yours. The quietness of the peace of God is yours. The quietness of the peace of God is yours. And nothing can intrude upon the peace that God himself has given his son. Nothing can intrude upon the peace that God has given you. Nothing, I mean not a thing, nothing in your world, nothing in your life can intrude upon the peace which God has given you. Do you know that uh, the peace that God has given you? Nothing can disturb the peace that God has given you. Do you know that one of the Course in Miracles definitions of peace is total uh, fulfillment, that peace is total fulfillment? So nothing can disturb the stillness of the total fulfillment of God is mine. It's the same as saying the stillness of the total fulfillment of love is mine. God is love. Peace is total fulfillment. So we're really saying the stillness of the total fulfillment of love is mine. The quietness of the total fulfillment of love is mine. Father, your peace is mine. Father, your peace is my peace. Father, your peace is my peace. What need have I to fear that anything can rob me of what you would have me keep? What what reason would I have to be afraid that I could lose the peace that God wants me to have? How could I possibly ultimately lose the peace that God wants me to have? How could you possibly ultimately lose the peace that God wants you to have? I cannot lose your gifts to me. You cannot lose a gift of God. You cannot lose a gift of God. And so the peace you gave your son is with me still. And so the peace that God gave you is still with you. And the peace that God gave me is still with me. In quietness and in my own eternal love for you. In quietness and in my own eternal love for you. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. The quietness of the peace of God is yours. The peace of the peace of God is yours. The stillness... The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. The stillness, the quietness of the peace of God is yours. The peace of your creator, the quiet of your creator, the peace, the total fulfillment, the stillness of the peace of God is yours. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. The stillness of the peace of God God is yours. The stillness, the quietness of the peace of God is yours. This is Earl Purdy. Check me out at www.earlpurdy.com. That's earlpurdy.com. Let peace extend from my mind to yours. The stillness of the peace of God is mine. The stillness of the peace of God is yours. Yes. Hello, mighty companions. Companions, we're going to do review thing num number six which is what is the Christ what is the Christ that one word can be such a trigger for so many people what is the Christ well when the Course in Miracles says Christ do you know that it's talking about <clears throat> God's Son God's creation as God created him uh, do you know that the Christ is the self we share Unite, uniting us with one another and with God as well. So, so the Christ just really means the one self we share that share that connects us all with love. 
Christ is the thought. So from A Course in Miracles perspective, Christ is the thought which still abides within the mind that is his source. Christ has not left his holy, healing, innocent home, nor lost the innocence in which Christ was created. The Christ is you. God's creation is God created it. So you, the creation of God as God created you, the Christ, have not left your holy, healing, innocent home, no lost the innocence in which you were created. In other words, the Christ, the real self in you, still remains and abides unchanged forever in the mind of God. Christ, do you know that Christ is the link that keeps you one with God and guarantees that separation is no more than an illusion of despair, for hope forever will abide in Christ. Do you know that your mind is part of the Christ? And the Christ man is part of yours. The Christ, when you hear that term from the Course, the Christ is the part in which God's answer lies. Where all decisions are already made and dreams are over. Christ, the real self within you, remains untouched by anything your body's eyes perceive. For though in Christ, his Father placed the means for your salvation, which is your right-mindedness and your healing, yet Christ does remain the self who, like his father, knows no sin. So your real self knows no sin. Your real self has no sin. Do you know that home of the Holy Spirit and at home in God alone, does Christ remain at peace? Christ remains at peace within the heaven, which is the reality of your holy, healed, innocent mind. So Christ remains at peace within the love in your loving mind. The Christ, the real self, the loving self, the innocent self, the sinless self. Do you know that this is the only part of you that has reality and truth? The only part of you that has reality and truth is your real self, the Christ, the part of you that knows no sin, that has never sinned? Do you know that the Holy Spirit, do you know that the home of the Holy Spirit is the Christ? And at home in God alone does Christ remain at peace within the heaven of your holy mind. The Christ is the only part of you that has reality in truth. The rest is dreams. Yet will these dreams, these dreams of fear, these dreams of being separate, these dreams of being a body, will be given unto Christ, your real self, to fade before his glory and reveal your holy self, your innocent self, the Christ to you at last. The Christ is your innocent self. The Christ is your innocent self. The Christ is your innocent self. For with forgiveness, for when, do you know that um, the Holy Spirit is reaching from the Christ in you to all your dreams and bids them come to him to be translated into truth. Christ will exchange your dreams of fear for the final dream which God appointed as the end of dreams. For when forgiveness, when correct perception rests upon the world and peace has come to every child of God, what could there be to keep things separate when forgiveness rests upon the world and peace has come to every son of God? What could there be to keep things separate for what remains to see? except Christ's face. And how long would this holy face be seen? How long would this holy face be seen? And when is it but the symbol that the time for learning now is over, the time for learning now is over, the time for learning now is over, and the goal of atonement has been reached at last. The goal of atonement has been reached at last. As we behold Christ's glory, will we know that we have no need of learning, we have no need of learning, we have no need of learning, we have no need of perception, we have no need of time. We have no need of anything except the holy self, the innocent self, the Christ whom God created as his son. So what is the Christ? Ask yourself, what is the Christ? Well, the Christ is nothing but you. You the way you were created by love. You the way you were created by love. Your real self connected to the, connected to the love that created you. The love that created you is God. And that extension of the love that is you is the Christ. So the Christ is your real self, your eternal self, your powerful self, your loving self. What is the Christ? That is the Christ. Yes.